doing today how are you doing today i am your host lacy g soldier turner and today i have a very 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 special guest with me um y'all already know man a three-time world boxing champion got over 36 professional fights under his belt uh he's been doing his thing for years man y'all already know we got the st louis native the wonderful amazing talented Devin alexander man welcome to the platform Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me, my good man. Good morning. Good morning. It's Sunday, fun day, and I'm on with my man. That's right, for sure, for sure. So look, check this out. Okay, so for the people who don't know, you know, I know you were born and raised in St. Louis, but, yes. but it said you you was living in a small two bedroom house with yes. four brothers and eight sisters. Can you tell the people about that experience? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, typical. Uh, I grew up with a like with a typical uh, black family in the um, uh, impoverished neighborhood. Uh, a little bit of uh, some low income housing, and um, I, I come from a big family: eight sisters, four brothers, five including me. Um, my mom did what she can to support. Uh, she did, my mom and dad did what they can f to uh, facilitate what they had around them. So I grew up in a two bedroom household. You can, you can expect how that can be cluttered. Um, you can only imagine how much room you have. Um, you gotta share everything. So when I, when, I, when, I, when I wear something, I gotta make sure I wash it for my little brother. Uh, if I use something, I got to make sure I wash it out so the next one can use it. Uh, it, it was just a life that um, I grew up knowing. Uh, I didn't know it was. I didn't know it was a bad thing though, because when you grow up in it, you think that's what the world is supposed to be. When you grow up in it, you think you don't know outside of St. Louis what it's supposed to be or what a family post live live like. So I thought it was normal. I thought um, I was supposed to be living like that until I began to get older and realized, man, I'm, I really am poor. <laughs> so it, it was kind of rough. Yeah. So, and I, I know you said, you know, you was getting talked about in school. I know we didn't all been through that as kids. <laughs> Could you let people know the importance of like combating bullying? Because, you know, yeah. that's a big thing that's been going on. Oh man, man! I, I, I'm gonna tell you a little story. So, uh, and I told you to Ridner. So, so, and, and now that I'm older, I understand what my mom was trying. Had, she did what she had to do, right? But uh, I think I was um, 14 years old, and I asked my mom on. And at the time, Chuck Taylor's was like. 18 bucks, 19 bucks. Mm -hmm. I said, Mom, please, can you not if you go to pay less? <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you if you go to the store, please do not give me no pay less shoes. Please <laughs> just give me some. Can you I, give me some I, I my music a lot? <laughs> <laughs> can you give me some Chuck Taylors? Please, mama. They only 19 bucks. I already looked it up. I already researched it. I know the price and everything. Please. So, lo and behold, she got home. She gave me some WCW shoes. <laughs> oh my God. I, I can, the reason why I can tell you about this story, because it's kind of, it was, I, at the time, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I'm finna get Joan on like hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was three, it was three wrestlers on the side of the shoe. I said, Mom, what? Why did you? Do? I did I, I, of course. Oh my. Of course, I couldn't. I couldn't tell my mama. 
mom, I, why did you keep it? Oh, that be said, thank you, mama. Yeah. Thank you. You know, so yeah. it, it, it was tragic. So the next day, of course, I got to wear shoes. Mm. So I try to wear me some baggy pants to cover the <laughs> side of my shoe. <laughs> but this, this damn idiot, this nosy dude that always trying to jump on somebody, he just couldn't leave it alone. He had to come over and grab my pants and what's these? Uh, it, was what are those? Hard. it was hard. Hey, look, I, I I rap, I talk about them in my music. My mama used to get us them payless shoes too, so I, I, I know the feeling. I used to hate going to school. Getting oh man! Oh my god! And they tried to mimic the real thing all the time. Yeah. Like, 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 I remember she bought us some that looked like Adidas. Mm. And, and, and this dude was like, man, them ain't Adidas. You got four stripes. <laughs> I remember I tried to put an LA gear sign on my thing. They was like, man, those payless shoes. <laughs> <laughs> So I know what you mean. So, but yeah, man, it, uh, you know, it's very important, you know, especially bull, you know, kids are still bullying today. So yeah, I know we both have been through that. Uh, let me ask you this, Evan. What do you think is the cause for like a lot of, you know, the shootings and murders and stuff to go on in the city? Uh, it's a good question. But uh, what me personally, what my opinion is, um, structure in the household mm -hmm. i believe structure is very important very vital in a kid's upbringing very vital you need you need it's a need for mom and dad to mm -hmm. be in the household they have to be because the mom give you something that dad can't and the dad gives the kid something the mom can't right so it all, God knew what he was doing when he had made both parents. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing because he knew that the two balances out. Like me and my wife got kids and we balance each kid out. They they know what they're going to get from the dad side. They know what they're going to get from the mom side. So it balances out. So when you just get in one side of it, it kind of messes up the kid's flow of life because they're not getting the proper guidance or the proper balance that they need. Just say, for instance, a young man. The young man, he getting the the emotional aspect from his mom, the nurturing, the, the love, but he's not being held accountable when he's doing wrong or he's not, nobody's not correcting him his behaviors so and a mom can't do that she can try and say hey that's wrong yeah. but a young man need that force right. that and, and not necessarily discipline they need that 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 voice mm -hmm. that's firm and not gonna and they need that look like my dad gave me a look every my dad gave me a look that i knew let me stop playing. My dad is not playing with me. Mm -hmm. Let me stop. That's all my dad. My daddy didn't discipline us. All he had to do was look at us. Yeah. And we well, know we had to stop. We yeah. know for a fact we had to stop. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's a combination of structure in the home and um, just some of the music. Um, I don't want to put it off on the music. Uh, but that is kind of, you know, they listen to his music, but those rappers aren't living that life mm -hmm. that they're rapping about, too. So, man, that, that question can be a low. I, 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 I know what you mean, definitely. You but I, I really love those answers, though. Yeah. It, I, I think um, where you said, you know, you, being you the three time, you know, boxer champion, you were saying those belts don't mean anything if your neighborhood you know, can't rise up at the same time. Can you uh, break down what you meant by that? Absolutely, absolutely. So if I, if my neighborhood, it was like just say, oh, let me, let me draw it back. Okay. If I'm flourishing mm -hmm. and if I am better off and I come from that neighborhood, 
how am I sitting here living comfortably and not over there helping these kids like I was helped? How can I feel like I've made any strides if these other kids don't have opportunity to do the same? That that to me that is that's backwards. There is more work to do. Just because I made it, that don't mean the work is still it, it the work can still be done because we need still to be down there with these kids, helping these kids because it's getting worse. And those belts I once was okay. But if these kids don't have the same opportunities, what's going to happen is one day I might get robbed. One day I might uh, be driving down the street trying to go help somebody and, and a kid come out and, 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 and try to take my car or whatever. So it, it defeats the purpose if, if I'm not helping. Right. You know, I made it, but I gotta go and help the other kids. Right. Like if 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 all if all of us uh, are still struggling, nobody's really winning. To be honest, nobody. It's it just putting a a, a, a band aid on it. You know, right. but everybody need to be thriving for a community to 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 be successful and. We can't leave the kids out because those are the next generation. We not gonna be here forever. So the next generation gotta see some positive, positive images of themselves inside the people that's here now. So that's what I that's what I meant by they don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing if those kids is out here robbing and shooting and not getting the same opportunity as I did. Facts. And then speaking of that, you know. Uh, we had your first event. You know, you're bringing amateur boxing show here, um, the Devin Alexander International Classic. Fight in the ring, not in that neighborhood. Uh, I know your first event was yesterday at uh, Haverstow. Can you tell the people about that and, you know, what you're doing with that? So, uh, boxing has been a part of my whole life, most of my life. Um, actually, Seven years. I started. Excuse me. I started when I was seven years old, mm. and it's been a part of my life ever since. So, um, I always prayed to God that if I was to be in a position position to help kids, I was going to come back and do that. Uh, right now, the way my career is, it's time for me to go and good go and try to help as many kids as I can. Use my platform to help as many kids as I can. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people think they have to leave their their city and and forget about the kids. You know, I'm not that I'm not that one. I have to make sure that I'm I'm walking in my purpose, which is that I always wanted to have kids. That's just it was in me. It was in me cuz I I know what they're going through. I know sometimes they probably not eating sometime when they go home. I know sometimes they 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 probably want some shoes but can't get it. I know sometimes they're getting bullied. I I know everything what them kids are going through in the city. Everything. When I go and talk to those kids in the city and I tell them I was just like them, when I when I tell them I was like right now they see me in a form of success. Yeah. But I when I tell them and when I break it down. <laughs> Their eyes just be glued to what I'm saying. They gravitate to what I'm saying because they understand. They know that I know what they're saying. I know what they're going through. I know it. So I knew I had to start something, and boxing was the avenue I can do easiest. So that's what my idea was, and I was thinking about a good place to host it at, and HBCU is a, you know, I mean, Harris starts to HBCU, so uh, it was just natural to use that uh, to give them some 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 credit and some publicity too as well, um, and it it all just came together. You know, you you can tell when God hand is on something because it just all came together. Uh, Harris show say, man, come on, come and bring it. We we got you. You can have the gym. 
you can you can do whatever you need to do to bring these kids in here to get them doing something positive. And I, they didn't get me. I didn't get no pushback at all. And, you know, I was able to get Roy to come in and that just add ice into the cake. And, man, it was an amazing, amazing event. Eric, St. Louis came out last night, man. St. Louis really came out. They showed out. They showed that they they want these kids to succeed. So they, they came out. So I appreciate them. Are you going to continue this? Is this going to be a continuation? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's seasonal. Mm. So me, me and Harris uh, uh, agreed to do a seasonal show. Okay. The next one is going to be February 10th, which is my birthday. Okay. Uh, and then the next one will be in the spring and then summer. Okay. So um, it's going to be, we, we just, and, and the idea behind that is to keep these kids busy. Mm-hmm. When, when kids are busy, the success rate goes up. Right. When, 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 just say, for instance, me, man, when I was boxing, I went to school. Mm-hmm. I came home. I did my homework. I went to the gym. By the time I get to the home, I'm ready to eat and go to bed. I ain't trying. I don't, man, I don't got time to do nothing else, man. I'll talk to you tomorrow, man. I am beat. That's how I think God is supposed to make it. He made it too, you know, to 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 during the day you go to school, you know, learn as much as you can, and then come home, do some do activity. Eat and go to bed. That's how I think right. all kids should be. Yeah. All kids. And then I think it alleviate a lot of this. Because, uh-huh. you, you know, when kids don't have nothing to do, they get into stuff. They figure out something to get into. Mm-hmm. Facts. And, really, and can you elaborate on that more? Because like, I know a lot of parents look at like, oh, my God, boxing is a vicious sport. Can you tell yeah. how boxing can help save lives? Oh, man. Oh man, man, look, I tell everybody, every young boy should box. Yeah. Hmm. Every young boy should box. I promise you, every young boy, because it teaches every young boy life lessons they will keep forever. If you was to run into each man out here, older man, I promise you they're going to remember the first time that they box. I promise you. I get it all the time. Uh-huh. It's a life learning lesson when you box. So I always tell people that boxing saves lives because it teaches them, first of all, you're not the baddest person out here. Second off, it teaches them to calm down. If a kid got an attitude problem and they they like to fight and they think they tough, what I do, I bring them to the gym, I let them spar, and they find out, <laughs> oh, shoot. There's another level to this, and I'm not as bad as I. Let me calm my attitude down. Let me. And it works. It saves life. I have seen it firsthand. Save, like, it, saved, it saved my life. It saved my life. So it's it's okay to lose. Boxing teaches you that. It's okay to lose, but it teaches you to calm down. You can get hit. Just say if me and you are sparring, right? Mm-hmm. If me and you in the ring sparring. Okay. And you hit me hard. Mm-hmm. I do not I cannot just take my gloves off <laughs> and I'm gonna kick your ass. I cannot say that. Yeah. In the ring, if you lose your cool, you'll get your ass whooped even more. Mm-hmm. You will get tore up even more because you're mad, you're frustrated, you oh. mad, I hit you hard, or you even, so you just going. You ain't thinking about it, you just going. And that's what life is. Mm-hmm. In life, you just can't just go because you're mad. Mm-hmm. You just can't go pick up a gun because you're mad because your life can be over. Right. Boxing does that. Boxing calms the kids down and it calms they nerve. It, it does so with such wonders, man. So I've seen it. If I if I was to tell any mom, a single mom, that need help with their boys, put them in boxing. Mm, okay. Put yeah. them in boxing. 
Y'all heard that? Ladies, fellas, whatever, put your children in boxing. They will learn a lot of things. Strategy, yes, you patience, need. everything, discipline, all of that. They don't even have to compete. They don't even have to compete. Just come try it. Mm -hmm. And she'll see a difference in her trial. I promise you. Okay. So then let me ask you this. On your journey, you know, with everything you've been doing, what would you say has been your greatest challenge? Oh, greatest challenge. It's a good question. Greatest challenge. My greatest challenge <laughs> is... Um, Man, that's a good question. I have to think about that one because um, <laughs> at the stump from you, 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 you have challenges, mm -hmm. but uh, for me, I just deal with them as they come. Mm -hmm. So um, most challenges, uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Like, 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 say for instance, I'm a, I'm a simple guy. Okay. I got I like to live simple. Okay. I like to. Um, I'm a family man. Okay. Uh, but if I was to have to choose, the challenging is to uh, get to these kids. You know, the yeah, kids that I do talk to. Mm -hmm. That's that's challenging because one talking to these kids one time is not enough. That's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Like when you go to when I go to, to over to the high school. I'm come for about an hour. I talk, they listen, but what they're going through is like 11 hours out of a day of what they're going through. Yeah. So what I've said is already gone by the time they get home. Yeah. So you got to constantly drill in the head to stay the course. Yeah. No matter how much they try to go left, you got to keep pulling them. Because one time is not enough. You got to keep, 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 keep going. And then eventually that it will click in the head to get it. But one time is not enough. Right. Okay. So let me ask you this. This should, hopefully this should be easy. What has been your greatest accomplishment? <laughs> greatest accomplishment. Yeah. Winning, winning my first world title. Yeah. And, uh, no, I too, and getting a key to the city. But yeah. one of my first... Winning, winning my first title because that opened my the doors for history making. You know, oh, for a second, that opened the door for me for history making. Mm -hmm. So when I won my first world title, I became a household name. Mm -hmm. The world was introduced to Devin Alexander. Mm -hmm. All the all the blood, sweat, and tears from seven on up came to that moment. That's what I was training for. All the push-ups, all the miles, all the the punches, all the bloody noses, all the busted lips, all that came to that moment, and it all made sense, and it all came together. So that was that was the the most. Uh, Amazing feeling, most uh, awesomest feeling in the world to 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 experience. People don't get it. We you got to be a fighter to understand just how hard it is to win one title, let alone three. Yeah. But it's hard to win one. Maybe one percent of the fighters. I think I forgot. I, I haven't looked at the percentage in a while. But only one or two fighters reach a world title win a world title mm -hmm. so to for me to win one two three it's 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 an amazing accomplishment so i just give it to god and i'm just grateful that he chose me because i got 13 brothers and sisters mm -hmm. anyone he could have cherry picked any one of them and out the bunch and say hey you you go do that you go do this i could been over there working at the airport or something mm -hmm. or uh, I could have been uh, working over there at um, uh, uh, being a teacher, a doctor, anything, yeah. you know, but he cherry picked me out of the bunch and say, I got a bigger purpose for you. Get your butt over. <laughs> Facts. So, look, what advice would you give to 
you know, the youth of a person who's thinking about going to commit a crime, robbing somebody, shooting somebody. What advice would you give that person? So, look, if, if you are thinking, if you are even got, got an inclination of getting out here trying to take anybody things or do something, anything illegal, don't do it. Just know you are playing Russian roulette with your life. Man, I tell people all the time, all the time, you are playing Russian roulette with your life, running up in somebody's house, because everybody got a gun nowadays. Facts. Everybody got a gun. Facts. You are you are really jeopardizing your life mm -hmm. because I've seen it. I saw an, I saw a video where a uh, lady would just 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 sitting on sitting on her couch, and it was a kid trying to break in her house, and she called the cops. They they had her on speakerphone. She said, "I'm gonna blow you. I'm gonna blow him away. Please, I don't want to kill him, but you, can you please try to break in my door? And if you come to this door, I'm gonna kill him." She didn't want to kill him. He came to the door, and and you can hear the pow. Yeah, and you know he's dead. So because she, she said she had a shotgun. So so you are you are playing with your life when you are or running up in people's houses or trying to do anything illegal, trying to take people's things. Like you cannot just take people hard earned. Everybody and what if they got a gun? Just say that that it could be your luck that the person you try to rob got a gun just like you do. Uh -huh. You turn your head here and they're pulling the strap out and shooting and killing you. It's justified. Right. Don't play with your life. Don't play with your life. It's not worth it. You that man probably got two dollars in his wallet. Uh -huh. But you you're he didn't kill you because he was fearful for his life. Yeah. Don't do it. Was. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. They, and they typically, typically when stuff happen like that, they, they, they usually only get a couple dollars. When the, right. when the backstory, yeah. when you heard the backstory about what's what happened and all mm -hmm. that, he only got sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. He lost his life. Oh my God, sixty dollars. Not worth it. Nope. Not worth it at all. Right. Yeah, I heard that. Listen to listen. Listen to that. So then, uh, do you have anything else uh, coming up that you want to promote? <clears throat> oh, absolutely, man! So my next show is February tenth, mm -hmm. um, which is my birthday. Um, we're going to start working on that. I'm also opening up a gym. Okay. I'm opening up a gym um, in North County, off of Chambers in West Florida. Uh, we're working on the renderings now, and we're just uh, in the process of building it. It's going to be the, the St. Louis hub of boxing. Mm -hmm. I want my gym to be a place where kids can come and enjoy themselves, be, feel safe, and, and, and learn life's lessons, mm -hmm. have memories in there. You know, I want my gym to be the go-to for boxing. Anything boxing, I want my gym to be the go-to. So um, those are the big things I'm working on right now and just being a family man, raising my own kids. Making sure they got what they need. Making sure I'm being the best dad I can to my kid. You know, that's that's uh, what I got going on right now. Okay. So how can people get in contact with you if they want to contact with you? Uh, you know, go boxing and all that. Okay. Uh, so my I'm on. I got a fan page, Devin the Great Alexander. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Devin the Great Alexander. Uh, Instagram uh, is D Alexander One, um, and Twitter is the Real Devin A. And uh, my wife is in control of the TikTok. She's okay. she's the TikToker. <laughs> she's, in, she's in charge of the, uh, the TikTok account. I I, it's, I think it's uh, uh, the Alexander family. I think on on TikTok, so you can follow follow us on there. But other than that, man, that, that those are all the social media. Social media is it can be uh, draining to your productivity. <laughs> like, it, it, it really can render your productivity. 
like um, just wasting your time on social media. You can't get nothing done. Just imagine if you're on social media, <laughs> you're not getting nothing done. Right. Not, nothing positive done. So I try to uh, limit that the right. much as I can. Okay. <laughs> so my last question that I love to ask all my guests. When it is all said and done and you are long gone from this earth, what is it that you want the people to know about Devin Alexander? Oh, good question. Uh, what I want people to know is that I was, I want people to know, say, Devin Alexander tried to help as many people as he can. He was a nice guy, amazing fighter, one of the best fighters to ever come out of St. Louis, um, one of the best fighters in the world. Walter White. Um, Talk your stuff. Talk your stuff. And and just uh, just an all around good person, you know. Uh, I want to be able to say I touch, I change kids' lives. I want I want kids to be able to say, man, Devin single handedly saved my life. I was about to go kill this dude, but he talked me out of it. I was about to go rob this guy, but he talked me out of it. Listen to his voice listening to his videos, remembering the words that, I, that he told me, I remember that he kept me from doing that. He saved my life. Mm-hmm. I want people, I want the kids to be, because that, that's how your name stay alive too, to be honest. Right. The, the, the most people you touch and, and affect in a positive way, the, the more your name live on forever and ever and ever. So right. um, the more people you touch, the better, the better. Most definitely. Well, thank you, Mr. Devin Alexander. You know, if you ever need anything from me, I got you. I um, mean, I appreciate the interview, and I'll definitely let you know when we drop this on the Argus, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I really appreciate you. Keep doing your thing. Or, you know, Argus, you one of the best. Legendary. Yeah. Legendary. So keep yeah. doing your thing. Uh, keep trying. Things, things can get rough sometimes, but always never stop. Facts. Real talk. Brother, thank you. Appreciate you, man. We'll talk later.